the question of creation as a coming together of form and matter is here described as a conjunction. That since the language of creation takes place as an act of love, that's the first thing Beatrice is saying. And creation comes through as passion, a love passion. It's an opening up in uh, love, opening up in new loves. And it's as physical, the language of creation, as could it could ever be. It's as, as in terms of the natural, the language of natural production and reproduction. This is the context of what she's saying, before and after. It is as if to have a creation, creation is that which in, introduces introduces the possibility of distinguishing between a before and an after, introduces a difference. That's, that's what uh, be, be, the, the language of Beatrice is. Let me go back to the image with which we started. Dante is wondering whether or not there was any break in Beatrice's speech. And he says that if there was a break, it was so fleeting, as happens with whenever the sun and the moon along the, the, the line of the horizon are going to be are aligned together, and it is as if they are balanced and held together by uh, the zenith above. And that is such a fleeting moment in the alignment of the stars. Why this metaphor? Not only he's saying that, but I think there is also an allusion to be it to, I'm sorry, Francesca here in Canto V. Did you catch it? Where he says, uh, for so long her face illumined with a smile, Beatrice kept silence. Uh, she, she just kept, kept on talking, looking fixedly at the point that had overcome me. The point that had overcome me is clearly an allusion to, but only a point was that that overcame us, Francesca says in Canto V. Okay? That's also, there's an allusion to Francesca. The question that I have to answer that I raised with you is, why is Dante mentioning these two infernal figures and framing his discussion on cosmology creation, first of all, by talking about Ulysses and now talking about or alluding to, not even mentioning, but alluding to Francesca. Why these two figures? One who wants to tra transgress and trespass the boundaries of the world in order to know, the other one who transgresses the norms of uh, what is allowed because of love. Knowledge and love somehow come into play, but they're in the infernal version. What is he saying though with this image? Why is uh, talked about Francesca, the, uh, the, the sun and the moon aligned briefly? What do you think he's saying? It's not a rhetorical question. Let me just, what, why do you think he would use this kind of language? Immediately after, Beatrice goes on explaining the creation of the world and the distinction between a before and an after. Why this metaphor? Why this long paragraph, this image here? Anybody? I think that Dante is asking right here, is it possible to localize a break? And he's saying it is as when we speak, that thing seems to be continuous, and yet just as in every syllable, between a sound and another, there is always an interval. So there was in the language of Beatrice. And that's what, to him, is the idea of creation. It seems to be, there is a, uh, the opposite of creation would be the eternity of the world. Something which would be, the, the universe is eternal. It has no beginning and no identifiable break. How can you tell? So if, if, it's, if the universe is eternal, you have no differences in, in, inside it. Dante wants to say it seems to be a continuous, uh, uh, the universe seems to have a continuous extension. A uh, uh, without time, a kind of eternity goes on and on. And yet, it says when we speak that you can identify the break. There was, however minute, there was a break between Beatrice's uh, exposition about the angelic orders and now the exposition that she goes into about, the, uh, about creation. And why then the other two metaphors? Now, now it's time to answer the question. Why talking uh, through Ulysses and, uh, and Francesca? Why evoke those two images? Um, the, I wish 
we could uh, uh, I have to keep that hanging a while so it can be become a little bit more uh, compelling what I'm going to tell you so with it uh, Oda now this is uh, uh, and as a ray shines this Dante uh, Beatrice is continuing with form and matter united and separate this is conjoined and pure pure and conjoined he says and as a ray shines into glass or amber or crystal so that from it coming to its completeness there is no interval so that a threshold, a threefold creation flashed into being from its Lord, Lord all at once without distinction in its beginning. With it, all that was created and ordained for the spirits, and these were the summit of the universe in whom was produced pure act, pure potency, and so on. So uh, the idea is that there is a universe of creation, uh, the universe of creation which seems to be very much like the physical world. It's described in physical terms the terms of, of uh, uh, the moon and uh, sexuality, uh, the cosmological language and scientific terms, and yet there is some kind of uh, difference that is introduced. Without creation, we would not have difference. We would not even have origins. That's the language. Now, why those two figures? Why Ulysses and... Um, uh, Ulysses and, 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 and Francesca. Ulysses, uh, I think that what Dante is doing finally is allowing us to see what the world of Inferno has to be seen as. The world of Inferno that we, we only saw as a world rejected, as a world of uh, evil and horror, all of a sudden is now retrieved as the best exemplar of what we may come to know of the spiritual world. It is almost an imaginative redemption that Dante goes into about the actual idea of, uh, of hell. He's implying, and that could become in many ways heretical, but I hope to show you that it is not, uh, that, that uh, the universe, as it goes back, as one goes back to the beginnings, clearly the journey to the beginnings has to be seen as a redemption of all that has been falling away. Uh, let me just say it in a slightly less tortuous way. There can be no redemption unless it implies that the whole of evil is overcome and destroyed. So that even the world of hell now appears all of a sudden as part of what we get to know about the ultimate structure of the universe. This seems to me to be the real uh, uh, lesson, the, the underlying and powerful message that Dante is sending through uh, these three cantos in the heaven of metaphysics.